Thank you, Dr. Matheson. Mr. Chancellor, Madam President, members of the graduating class of 2014, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, Clayton H. Riddell is a visionary businessman and philanthropist. Although his business activities are headquartered in Calgary, his horizons reach to Canada's north. He began his career with Chevron and had the opportunity to experience the beauty and promise of Canada's north firsthand. He led geological field mapping parties for many years as part of Chevron's exploration program. After Clay began Paramount Resources in 1978, he went to where the competition was scarce, the prospects were big, and he wasn't daunted by the lack of infrastructure. He started out doing pioneering work in northeastern Alberta and eventually discovered a series of very large gas pools. After barely staying alive for a few years, eventually a pipeline was built and the gas started to flow. To this day, the Liège lateral pipeline is known as the line that Clay built. He was intrigued by the potential of the North and kept finding himself going back there. Cameron Hills, Liard, Colville Lake, and eventually the Mackenzie Valley. This part of our great country has left an indelible mark on Clay Riddell. Indeed, he believes that the North has the potential to be a fundamental part of Canada's future. For much of his career, he has returned to that region time and again to assess whether the time is right to assist in connecting the North to the rest of the country, and through this, help to bring prosperity to Canada's Northern residents, allowing them to realize their potential. A son of Manitoba, Mr. Riddell remains close to his alma mater, the University of Manitoba, where his philanthropic actions have led to the establishment of the Clayton H. Riddell Faculty of Environment, Earth, and Resources. This reveals one of his great passions, investing in people. Throughout his career, whether as a businessman or a philanthropist, Clay Riddell has sought opportunities to in invest in great people passionate people with sound ideas. His approach can be summarized this way. Give people the tools they need, empower them to act, and they will seize opportunities, make good decisions, and return benefits several fold to society. Sometimes the experience of one's youth shapes one's actions decades later. As Clay Riddell's high school years were coming to an end, he was given the opportunity to be a page in the Manitoba legislature. These were heady days. The government of Douglas Lloyd Campbell was on its last legs. There was much political tension in the air. The two pages ran messages from elected members to the, set, to the speaker, to reporters, to one another. Sometimes the pages had to recite messages orally announcing the author and which writing they represented. This provided not only a perfect introduction to the formality and ceremony of the legislature, but also helped to develop in Mr. Riddell an abiding respect for our democratic institutions and an appreciation of, of the fact that elected officials from diverse backgrounds working together can make better decisions than by acting alone or by working exclusively with colleagues who share similar views. More than 50 years later, an opportunity presented itself to invest in great people, in sound ideas, and in a passionate commitment to make a positive difference in Canada's political institutions. Mr. Riddell decided to make a transformational investment that led to the establishment of the Clayton H. Riddell Graduate Program in Political Management here at Carleton University. The first program of its kind in Canada, and arguably the top such program in the world, focused on Westminster-style institutions. At its heart, the program is dedicated to the development of more constructive and ethical politics, of better public policy and governance. 
The cross-partisan perspective that characterizes the Riddell program teaches our students that political differences are to be expected, that these differences can be expressed in a respectful manner, and that ultimately, political and policy effectiveness are enhanced by working together. Today, the third cohort of the Clayton H. Riddell graduate program in political management is convocating. Students have come from across all Canada and beyond to be part of this extraordinary program. Graduates are now working in political offices from British Columbia to Prince Edward Island. Truly, this program is changing the practice of politics in Canada. None of this would have been possible without the vision and leadership of Mr. Riddell. It pains me, however, to have to say that Clayton Riddell is not perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you please to find it in your heart of hearts to forgive his part ownership of the Calgary Flames. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, in recognition of his brilliant career in business and his thoughtful contributions to higher education, as well as to good governance in Canada, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws honoris causa upon Clayton H. Riddell. By virtue of the authority vested in me with the Board of Governors and upon recommendation by the University Senate, I confer this degree, Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Congratulations. Platform guests, uh, honored guests, uh, graduates, friends and family, thank you for that wonderful introduction. Uh, the Ottawa Senators are in Calgary tonight for a hockey game. <laughs> no offense, but I'm <clears throat> probably on the other side of where you guys are. Good afternoon, graduates. This is your day. I wish I had some silver bullet words that would make all your careers incredibly successful. I don't, so you can tune me out anytime. <laughs> First, I would like to thank Carleton University for honoring me with this Doctor of Laws degree. Can you imagine an oilman from Western Canada receiving a Doctor of Laws degree from a university in our nation's capital because of his interest in politics? As was mentioned, the closest I got to a political career was as a page boy when I was in high school in the Manitoba legislature for a few months. In any event, I do truly, truly appreciate this honor. My association with Carleton began only four or five years ago when we began talking with Preston Manning and Cliff Friars, asked, asked me to consider funding a school in political management. The logical place was Ottawa. The university of choice was Carleton. I had just been to a dinner in Calgary celebrating the opening of a School of Public Policy at the University of Calgary, where prominent politicians advised the audience, I was in the audience, that this school, this new school at Calgary, was necessary to educate public servants to make public policy as elected politicians didn't have time to make policy. I found this very strange. I always thought politicians made policy and the bureaucrats made it happen. This bothered me and didn't seem to connect with my vision of democracy. So in an attempt to make the playing field level and give political offices the opportunity to do at least some, to at least have some input in policy decisions, we established uh, this uh, graduate program in political management at Carleton. And it's our hope that the program will be a step and hopefully a major step in improving the quality of public policy decisions in Canada, 
The program, the first of its kind in Canada, began in the fall of 2011 and each year graduates 25 students. It is intended to teach political management from an ethical, practical, and cross-partisan perspective to persons who will be occupying positions of political staffers in offices of elected officials as well as executive positions with political parties, campaign teams, and advocacy groups. If by improving the knowledge and skills of the political practitioners, we increase the quality of public policy and decision making, the private sector, the public sector, and the people of Canada will all benefit. I believe we're headed that way with this program, and who knows, maybe a future Prime Minister will come from through the program. I hope you'll all take an active interest in the political process, but I know that's not what's on your mind today. You are looking at the future of your lives and careers going forward. How will you use your particular gifts? What choices will you make? Your future is going to be, <coughs> continue to be, see amazing change. I graduated uh, where you are over 50 years ago, and over my lifetime, we have gone from party line telephones, you probably don't know what those are, to uh, iPhone, whatever number it is now. <laughs> Television was developed, as were computers, email, Twitter, and on and on. These are only the changes that come quickly to mind. <clears throat> We've all de uh, developed innovation in all aspects of our lives. We have Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> Lady Gaga. You and I cannot imagine what the next 50 years will bring, but it will be incredible. My advice to you, don't be a spectator uh, to the wonderful chances <clears throat> that will occur. Be a part of it. When you look back 50 years from now, make sure your list of things you wish you had done is shorter than the list of what you did, both in your career and life outside your career. <clears throat> My grandson, <clears throat> grandson graduated from college last spring. I gave him a note quotating a parable I remembered as a child, or thought I had remembered. When I Googled it, I had put two different parables together. Anyway, what I remembered and related was the father who had <coughs> gave each of his three sons ten pieces of gold. After a few years, the father checked to see what the three sons had done <coughs> with their gold. The first son had blown the money on wild parties and no money remained. The father was disappointed. The second son had buried the gold pieces, so he still had the ten gold pieces. His father was very disappointed. The third son had used the gold pieces to carry on commerce and had multiplied the ten <coughs> gold pieces into enough wealth for himself and his family and enough to make a better life for everyone in the village. And of course, his father was very pleased and proud. The university degree you'll be given today is something even better than gold coins. Use it to be part of where this world of ours is going. Don't be afraid to try. Fear of failure is your greatest enemy. To quote Winston Churchill, the greatest fears are created by our own imagination. Don't give in to them. Great advances will be made over your lifetime. Be a driver in the development of the advances that will make our world a better place. Don't be a passenger. Pick what you love and go for it. I've had more than my share of luck during my career, but you know, a funny thing, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Good luck to all of you. <laughs>